Hi, my name is Tu, like the number, and I'm here to discuss the organic carbon partition coefficient, also known as K sub OC. The organic carbon partition coefficient is a measure of the tendency for organic substances to be adsorbed by soil or sediment. The equation can be expressed as K sub OC equaling the mass absorbed substance per mass of organic carbon over the concentration of substance dissolved in water. The units for the numerator is in micrograms per kilogram, and the units for the denominator is in kilograms per liter. So the units of K sub OC will be in liters per kilogram. The coefficient is very substance specific, but it is largely independent of soil properties. The coefficient provides a measure of chemical partitioning between organic carbon, which is in soils, rocks, and sediments, and water. The higher the, the K sub OC, the more likely a chemical is to bind to the solid phase of soil or sediment rather than to the water within the soil. Now here's to Christina to talk about why the coefficient is important. So why is the organic carbon partition coefficient important? This coefficient helps in predicting the mobility of an organic soil contaminant. It's used in determining the fate and transport modeling of various chemicals. It's also useful in determining transport in rivers, stormwater runoff, and, so and soil groundwater transport. So, a higher KOC value means that you have a soil particle with a rough surface and your groundwater passing by with the chemical in the water. When you have a high KOC, lots of that chemical will be adsorbed onto the surface of the soil particle. When you have a lower KOC, that means that you'll have fewer particles adsorbed onto the surface of your soil and the groundwater will carry your chemical through into the next stage of your water table. Thank you, Reese, for your explanation. So all, although these values are mostly independent of the soil type, the values can vary, can vary greatly due to temperature, pH value, the size distribution, the surface area, salinity, and dissolved organic matter. Now, the KOC value is pretty hard to determine in the field. There are a lot of variables, and it can be highly costly. So there's an easier way to determine it empirically, given the KOW value. The KOW is the octanol water partition coefficient, which is found by the concentration of a chemical in the octanol phase versus the concentration of the chemical in the aqueous phase in a two-phase octanol water system. Now, in order to determine the KOC from this value, there's a, an empirical relationship. It's a linear log-log scale in that you have your K log of KOC is equal to 0.7919 times the log of this KOW value plus 0 0.0784. Sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo to you, but it's a much easier way of determining your KOC value given a laboratory setting and empirical relationships. In the figure provided by the EPA's website, the correlation between the log of the octanol water partition coefficient, KOW, and the log of the organic carbon partition coefficient, KOC, is shown as a straight line. This is an alternative me method to determine the organic carbon partition coefficient if you have previously determined the octanol water partition coefficient. In addition to the octanol water partition coefficient, KOC is also related to KSW. And what that is, that is the soil water partition coefficient. And it is a tendency of a compound to be absorbed into a soil or sediment particle and can be described as the ratio of the concentration of the absor absorbed chemical over the concentration of the dissolved solids. And from there, we, we can relate it to the organic carbon partition coefficient by, the, by using the mass fraction of soil organic carbon, also known as FOC. So now for our example problem, we'll be looking into a lab experiment and analyzing some data from our lab and also compare, using information that we've gotten from the EPA website. So first, um, the equation that we said before, KOC equals the chemical absorbed per organic carbon over 
the chemical dissolved per liter of solution. So in uh, the EPA website, they give a table saying that the log of the KOC value equals 1.77. And in our lab experiment, you have um, 12 milligrams of benzene per liter of solution. Okay, so now having your 100 grams of soil sample, which contains the organic carbon, you convert that into kilograms. So 1,000 grams into kilogram. So you have 0 0.1 kilograms. And now you insert it into the equation. So um, the log of, the anti-log of 1.77 is 58.9. And then the units for KFC are liters per kilogram. And then that equals um, the part of the equation that we're going to be solving for, the amount of chemical adsorbed. So uh, we represent this x um, over the amount of organic carbon, so 0.1 kilograms, all over um, the chemical dissolved per liter of solution, and that was 12 milligrams per liter. So now that uh, trying to solve for the, in the equation, 12 times 58.9 equals 707, and then the liters cancel out, and you're left with milligrams per kilogram equals x over 0.1 kilograms. And finally, multiplying that 0.1 kilograms by 707 milligrams per kilogram gives you 70.7 uh, milligrams. To conclude this lesson about the organic carbon partition coefficient, we'll recap some of the key points that we went over. First, the KOC value is very important in determining transport of contaminants through various media. Next, depending if the values of KOC are high or low, the coefficient will tell us the degree of mobility of contaminants. Lastly, the KOC values are not determined for all substances, and the values can vary greatly depending on various factors. We hope this video has been informative, and thank you all for watching.